sink. Can we talk about this? Getting a new champion release in League of Legends should always be seen as a good thing. I mean, when you sit back and like really think about it, a new champion quite literally means free new content for the game. And in nearly every single other instance of gaming, this is practically a means for celebration. When Smash Brothers announces a new character, everyone in Japan gets to go home on paid leave. Yes, that's 100% true. What are you gonna do? fact check me in 2022? I mean, some of the greatest reaction content on all of the internet are a bunch of people gathering around a giant TV and just absolutely popping off when they find out who the next Smash Bros character is. Is it gonna be Sora from Kingdom Hearts? Or is it gonna be Scorpion from Mortal Kombat? Except this time, his down special is to increase the maturity rating of the game. But for some reason or another, new champions in League of Legends have become a means to grieve. Like being told that your beloved hamster got into a 15 car pileup on the freeway. We should have never let him get his license. And the reason for it is that almost every single new champion can be explained by a plethora of unfortunate sentences like these. Maybe like make it make them all pop out and like shake the one that goes what the I don't know exactly when the turning point was for new champions to start being treated like war criminals, but unfortunately, we've gotten to the point where the only people who can celebratorily take a drink after a new champion is released are the rioters who released said champion. And if any of you devs are watching this video, I suggest you take another drink after releasing Nyla because people... Well, they're pretty mad. Sure, there's a lot of reasons for people being upset, which we'll get into, but can you imagine if people got this upset over a normal game releasing content? God damn it. Yo, man, are you all right? I just heard you scream. No, I'm not all right. Can you see this shit? They are adding 24 entire new courses to Mario Kart. That kind of sounds like a good thing. Of course that's not a good thing. I've only practiced Moomoo Meadows. How am I supposed to perform now? I don't know, man. It just kind of seems like you're taking this a little seriously. Are you gonna be all right? No, I'm not all right, man. Just, just run the ad. That's how it trends. Before we continue today's content, I just wanted to give a massive shout out to today's sponsor, Tracker.gg. Tracker.gg is a fantastic way to look at in-game stats. Showing you everything from champion statistics, performance heat maps, best teammates, and everything in between. They also have live match stats, which can show you crucial information the second you get into a lobby. And the best thing is that all of this information is also available on their mobile app, meaning that you could go theorycraft on the go or just find out which one of your friends has been inting all of your games. But wait, there's more. The tracker network is also capable of tracking your stats in a bunch of other games as well like Valorant, Fortnite, Destiny, TFT, Fall Guys, and so many other games. Heck, trackers should go ahead and get a side gig at the FBI because there's nothing they can't track. So whether you're just trying to improve your game, learn exactly what happened in your match, or figure out which one of your teammates decided to cosplay a 400 pound ankle weight that day, Tracker is the perfect app to improve your games because there's a lot. So don't just let me tell you about it. Head on over to the link in the description right now and start using Tracker to track all of your games. It's fantastic and you better download it from the link in the description. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta grow my hair back for this video. <laughs> Neela is the most hated champion release since she who will not be named. Shut up! I haven't been able to sleep in weeks! And honestly, it's kind of for a good reason. Because as it stands, Neela is the bridge between what everyone loved about League of Legends and what everyone now hates about League of Legends. In her gameplay itself, she's a relatively fun ADC that has decent engage, the ability to skirmish, and high levels of play potential. But if we dive into the code of the game though, Neela is just better than you for the sake of being better than you. She genuinely feels like a champion
champion that would have been released at the same time as Lucian, aka the glory days of League of Legends. But then, right before Riot released her, some crack addict broke into the Riot dev room and added 37 lines of bonus text. Allah! To further dive into this unhealthy idea, I want to take a look between a complicated champion and an overtuned champion. For a champion to be complicated, it has to be represented in their gameplay. They should require practice and finesse because in order to succeed on them, you should be able to play them well enough for their layers of difficulty to actually be an advantage. Azir is a perfect example of this because even at his stronger points in pro play, his solo queue dominance was never that high because he was such a hard champion to master, which is why he dominated pro play for all of those years but was never really that big of an issue in solo queue. This design is fine because the player is rewarded for spending hundreds of hours learning how to do the Shariman Shuffle. I'm gonna name it something funnier. This design is fine because the player is rewarded for spending hundreds of hours learning how to do the patented Shariman Butt Blast technique. <laughs> this is a complicated design. However, on the other end of the spectrum, we have overtuned champions. Champions that just beat the hell out of all other champions because their numbers are higher than they should be, and they deal bonus damage here, and they get resets here, and they have dashes here, and whatever else Riot wants to fit into this souffle of misery. A perfect example here would be on release Lucian, because his gameplay was relatively straightforward. Using skill shot after skill shot but he also had a dash that reset on auto attacks, a double strike passive, an insanely potent ult, and there was a reason why he was an ADC, mid laner, and top laner all at the same time. This is an overtuned champion. The difference here is that Azir required training, finesse, two degrees from Bird College, a third degree black belt in Shareem and Taekwondo to even be played at a decent rate. Whereas on release, there should have been a channel called Twitch Plays Lucian so that we could see how fast a Twitch chat could hit Challenger. Neela is unfortunately very, 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 very clearly Overtuned. Her genuinely good gameplay design is bogged down by the idea that every single skill should be a high school science fair project, making her a shining testament to everything that's wrong in League of Legends. Believe it or not, it's okay to just give a character a skill shot without adding the passive that every time it lands, it will triangulate the position of the enemy's parents in real life and then zap their kneecaps. It just kind of feels like all design meetings go like this. Sir, we finally did it. We finished writing the brand new champion. Good, good. Now, let me know what I'm looking at here. Okay, well, her Q is a damaging skill shot. Mm -hmm. Her W is a dodge on auto attacks. Mm -hmm. Her E is a dash that she could use twice. Mm. And her ultimate is just AOE damage. Well, I get it. Is that good? Did you not just hear me? I didn't know I was stuttering, I said I get it. I don't know what that means, sir. Of course that's not a good thing, dumbass! It's season 12! Champions aren't supposed to be simple anymore! I want every single ability to have so much text that if humanity nukes itself and aliens find it, they'll think it's a piece of religious scripture, okay? I want team fights to look like a goddamn rave by how much the health bars are going up and down like a top-tier Vegas stripper, okay? So how about you go back into that shitty little dungeon of yours and you come back with a champion that is worth losing sleep over. You got that? Neela's passive is actually two passives, because adding a passive on an active ability is too boring, so why not passively add passives? Her first passive is that whenever she kills a minion, her and the nearest ally champion gain an additional 50% EXP that they would have lost from sharing. Which basically means that unless she's brain dead, Neela and her support will always have the level advantage in the bot lane. On top of that, EX on top of that, experience is the one resource in League of Legends that you cannot expedite, which is why this ability is so powerful. This gives the already powerful Neela a buff that doesn't even buff Neela. It buffs all of Neela's friends. Because now Neela and her support are going to hit level 6 at the same time as their mid laner, while your support is going to die from famine before they hit level 5. And believe it or not, her second passive is even crazy than the first one. Whenever a nearby allied champion
champion uses an ability to heal or shield either Neela or themselves, they both receive a bonus amount equal to 7.5% of the healing and 15% of the shielding. Bonus shielding lasts as long as the shield that triggered the effect, holy fuck, this is so confusing, to a maximum duration of 4 seconds. Basically, Neela and her support get bonus EXP just because, and they also get much better healing and shielding as well just because. She doesn't even have to cast anything, stack anything, or even press a single button. All she has to do is last hit, which ADCs are supposed to do anyway. It just happens for her. Like if someone opened up the debug menu and changed her numbers for no reason. It actually feels like instead of starting with a Doron's item, Neela decided to rush a fucking game shark. It's kind of a dated joke. <laughs> I hope you know what that is. Believe it or not, Neela's Q has three passives. <laughs> Passively, Neela gains 33% armor penetration based on her crit chance. No, that's not a typo. If Neela builds crit chance, she will get free armor penetration. And if you're wondering, up to about 1400 gold worth. Neela can also heal from her basic attacks for up to 15% of the damage dealt on enemy champions. And this healing amount is based on crit chance, meaning that crit chance is now granting Neela armor penetration and bonus healing, just for building it. And get this, if she's already at maximum health, her healing is now converted into a shield that lasts for six seconds. Now, are you ready to hear the active part of it? Neela cracks her whip. <laughs> That's it. This deals physical damage to all enemies hit, increasing by up to 100%. How does the damage increase, you ask? Well, that's easy. By building. Crit chance. But Scooch, does that mean that the whip has a chance to crit and not crit? No, 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 silly viewer. Crit chance just passively increases the Q's damage by up to 100%, while also passively giving her healing and passively giving her armor penetration. It's so good. You know, the whole point of ADC's building and scaling with crit chance is that there's a slow ramping start in which ADC's build more and more crit chance until they can actually rely on critting. But Neela's not like that. Neela makes her own destiny. And frankly, Neela thought that Chance's last good album was Chance 3. So she's not gonna rely on Chance. And she'll just get stronger anyway. I'm still reading the cue, by the way. I'm baffled. If Neela's Q hits an enemy, she empowers herself for 4 seconds, gaining bonus attack range and up to 60% bonus attack speed while also causing her basic attacks to strike in a cone that deals 100% of her AD to champion's hit, though the cone damage is reduced on minions and monsters. I would like to point out that this basically gives Neela a free super empowered Tiamat at level 1, because it's dealing 100% of Neela's AD as damage to all champions, while also giving her enhanced range and the ability to push faster than you can even get that FF vote. Meaning she's not only going to beat you to level 2 from her EXP gain on passive, but she could also flat out beat you to level 2 through push power alone. Wow, whoa, this ability seems very strong. Surely it must have some sort of massive downside to merit its value. Jin, can you tell me the cooldown on this ability? Four. Well, if it's up every four seconds, and it empowers her every four seconds, then she's permanently empowered. Then surely there must be some downside somewhere. Jin, how much mana does this ability cost? 30. Uh, 30. Uh, what the <sighs> Oh, I understand that Neela is technically a melee champion, but this Q is up so frequently that it's not going to be a problem. On top of that, since she's a melee champion, she stacks Conqueror, like, very fast. Neela's Q is physically longer than a Challenger Q in North America. And much like a Q in North America, most times, you're gonna wanna dodge. Believe it or not, my favorite part of this ability isn't the free armor penetration or the other stat buffs. No. No. My favorite part isn't even the satisfying sound effect. Harder daddy. What? It's actually the fact that it can hit towers. <laughs> and I tested this, and a full build Neela can take an entire turret 
in four seconds. That is about as fast as a 700 stack Nasus with Demolish. And if you're trying to be a mega fucker, did you know that Neela can actually whip both of the Nexus turrets at the same time? Oh my goodness, bro. And did you know that when Neela Q's a tower, she gets the attack speed buff anyway? And did you know that if she goals Holebreaker as her last item, Neela can flat out 1v1 a tower with no minions? <laughs> like, I, I feel like I'm just making this shit up for an April Fool's joke, but I'm not. <laughs> Now, I want to take a quick second and tell you that so far, we're only on Neela's Q. And so far, Neela passively gains heals, passively gains shields, passively gains an overheal, passively gains attack speed, passively gains armor penetration, passively gains damage on her Q, which hits towers, and passively gains experience points. And do you want to know what a Neela has to do in game in order for all of this to happen? Is that it? Neela's W is straight up disrespectful because much like the rest of her kit, it just allows her to outright win. Except this time, she actually has to press a button. Oh no. Neela envelops herself in mist for 2.25 seconds. While doing so, she becomes ghosted and gains move speed while also reducing all incoming magic damage by 25% and dodging all basic attacks. You know, in the lane where the majority of the damage being dealt is coming from basic attacks. And logistically speaking, by process of elimination, if you can't hit Neela during a 2v2 trade, you should at least focus the support to try to get some damage off. But wait, this is season 12. A counter strike with magic damage reduction simply is not enough. So we're going to let it spread to allies if she touches them. That's right, if Neela touches an ally while misted, they also become misted for 1.5 seconds, meaning they will also dodge all of your basic attacks, become ghosted, get bonus move speed, and get 25% magic damage reduction. But you know what you shouldn't miss? Subscribing to the channel and ringing the bell so that you don't miss a banger like this one. As it stands, we currently only have about 15% of you who have rang the bell, so please let's try to get that number up. We've secretly been working on a lot of great stuff behind the scenes, some of them taking me hours a day, but I can't show you just yet. I can, however, promise that it's something you don't want to miss. On top of that, when we hit 400,000 subscribers, I'm going to cosplay Dami Void Mommy Belvet. So please subscribe if you haven't already, and let's hit that number soon so that I can stop having nightmares about it. Let's keep going. Neela's E is actually very straightforward, and it makes sense. Devs are humans too. I know that if I just finished writing my college thesis, I would want to take a nap as well. Neela dashes a fixed distance in the direction of a target, dealing physical damage to all enemies she passes through. She can store up to two charges. If Neela casts her Q while she's dashing, she will Q along her path instead. It's worth noting that Neela can use this dash on allies and enemies, giving her the mobility she needs to spread her W like her hit album. Now that's what I call Neela Volume 1, featuring her hit single, Hit or Missed. Huh? And finally, seven pages into the script, we can talk about Neela's ultimate. 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 Oh. Neela's ult is to whirl her whip around for one second, dealing physical damage to all nearby enemies. She then bursts to deal more physical damage and pulls enemies 250 units towards her. Each hit slows enemy targets. But we're not done, because Neela's entire kit feels like a fucking run-on sentence. Neela also heals herself and all nearby allied champions for up to 45% of the damage dealt to enemy champions, based on crit chance. Also also converting each heal beyond max health to a shield wow. that lasts for 6 seconds. Now, I try to stay away from talking about exact ratios these days, especially when it comes to new champions. Because recently it feels like the dev team has been sliding values up and down like a goddamn house DJ. But this number is so outlandish that I can't not talk about it. Neela's ultimate deals up to 685 base damage and 
400% of her bonus AD. That's just a absurdly big number. And don't forget that she's granting up to 45% of the damage dealt as heals and shields to all allied champions while also CCing enemies. It's just such an insane amount of power and utility in a move that you don't even have to aim. Now, I would like to take a second to address the big brown and bodacious elephant in the room. Neela's Q is a spammable, low cooldown ability that she can heal from that scales with crit chance, like Samira. Neela's W is a get out of jail free card that she could use to win trades or just negate a huge portion of incoming damage, like Samira. Neela's E is a dash that she could use multiple times on either allies or enemies, which was just like Samira until they decided that it was too overpowered to let Samira dash to allies as well, like Samira. And Neela's ultimate is a massive burst around her body that can make or break a team fight while also giving her a ton of sustain and making her hard to kill. Like some- Which is why so many people are just calling Neela Water Samira. Water Samira? More like, what are they thinking? Samira? More like, some of your champions are getting ridiculous. Neela? More like, kneel at her feet unless you want to get stricken down. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Neela is unfortunately both the best and worst things when it comes to League Champion design. Her playstyle is relatively unique if you just forget about Samira's existence. Her active abilities are all pretty simple on paper and reminiscent of a time that champions were easy to understand but very hard to master. Unfortunately though, her insane amount of passives devolve her from being a possible fan favorite into a shining example that League of Legends is now and will forever ever be a different game. Calling Neela a mistake is pretty harsh, but in truth, the day that she was released, Riot actually had to hotfix her. And that's when the sad reality came out that Neela was actually seven mistakes, meaning that they should have left her in the cooker for at least a little while longer because she puts the WIP in whip. Neela's title is actually the unending joy, and I understand. If God created me to just be better than everyone else, I would have unending joy as well. But he didn't. And instead, I get heartburned for even looking at a slice of pizza. If you want to make flashy plays and turn the game around by an insane teamfight and crazy sustain, Neela is the champion for you. If you want to play passively, heal in lane, and offer a bunch of utility to your team while you eventually outscale everyone else, Neela is the champion for you. If you ever wondered what it was like to play League of Legends with every single cheat code imaginable except for 007 GoldenEye's big head mode, then Neela is the champion for you. In short, winning a trade with Neela is a lot like a chaperone trying to act cool at a high school prom. All you gotta do is hit the whip. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Can We Talk About This? I hope you guys enjoyed it. This episode is kind of special and I don't want to say why just yet. It was 10 pages of script. It was a lot of work, but you're going to find out very soon. Can We Talk About This is about to become a weekly show again, or at least as close to weekly as we can do, but it is going to be on a lot broader topics. And honestly, I am just so excited to show you guys. I've been putting in a lot of work behind the scenes and I mean it. So if you haven't rang the bell yet, please do. It really helps the channel out. And if you haven't subscribed, please do, because this show is about to be coming out pretty frequently. And I think that the episodes coming up are going to be episodes that you can enjoy and actually show your friends without them wondering what the fuck a passive armor penetration is. Anyways, I love you. Please subscribe if you haven't. Ring the bell. And that's all I gotta say. I'm gonna jump off the screen again because I'm wasting your time. If you're wondering what this is, it's my mouse. I have the script right there and I'm using this to scroll. 